All you have to do is type in, in, a, in a search engine on the internet, uh, Billy Meyer or Figu, and you will see there are a lot, there's a lot of negative hits on that search um, term. And there are a lot of people that have something to lose if the, if the truth actually comes out. All the information he has given has been proven to be correct for decades. So um, why people aren't listening to him, um, I don't know. To me, in the, in the Geistes Lehre with the explanation and the understanding of the might of the thoughts, something not taught at all. And I think Billy refers to a lot of this as the secret sciences, how it leads to the evolution of the human consciousness, the human being, and how that has been stifled for millennia by the powerful, the religions and the, the political structures and those two forms that teach people to be partisan, antagonistic, very illogical, unreasonable, unyielding, and out of touch with life and with nature. Spiritual teaching helps bring us back. One of the main messages Billy says, don't believe me, think for yourself. The Figure community is kind um, where people um, come together and find together the truth to learn about the evolution, of the, about the spiritual teaching and to come forward and to bring, you could also say, the mankind a little step farther. In terms of my experience with the people in Figu, the passive members, the core group members, the different things, uh, I find that of course, one often first comes to a situation with ideas, expectations, uh, you know, preformed understandings which fall away when you get to interact with and know the real people a bit. And you then see that wonderful commonality with other humans. Nobody is perfect. It's surprisingly normal. Um, <laughs> uh, when I first came here, I didn't know what to expect. I found um, the area in Switzerland, it's very ordered. I, I love the, the environment. Uh, the center itself um, is a beautiful center. The people are good, hard-working, uh, normal, friendly people, um, down to earth. Um, that's what I liked about it, yeah. The passive members who are at the center will uh, realize that there are quite uh, a number of differences between the different personalities. For me the guideline was set uh, by, the, by the books uh, that Billy wrote and by his presence, by his stability and uh, in the end I decided no matter what I encounter in the Figo, for me uh, the Geisteslehre is important and the rest, okay, it's people and people make mistakes and have problems and all kinds of that. Being in the core group is, <laughs> is uh, it's not uh, like uh, sitting in the cloud and playing harp or anything like this. It's not the par paradise because we are, um, we are very uh, different, different people. Figu itself as the, let's say, the group in Switzerland and the where the center is established, I've come to it now 20 times since the year 2000. And uh, I never feel that I am a group-oriented person. I like my individuality and all this stuff, but I actually find all the time a certain kind of fulfillment with coming together with like-minded people, including in, in our group in the United States. Normally I would never go to group meetings, now I look forward to it, and it does not detract from my own personal preferences in life or my individuality. As a matter of fact, it only enhances it because of the contributions that other people make to my understanding. They will answer your questions if you ask them. If you don't ask them, they will not, um, they don't go on, you know. <laughs> you need to get to know them. Um, but they were friendly and welcoming and um, I think 10 years I've uh, been involved now. It's a feeling like a family, a little bit. So you talk to them even if you don't know them for a long time. It's like it's a family. You know the person like a long for a long, long time, 
and you feel home. It's uh, interesting to meet people with uh, a similar mindset. Right now at least it only attracts a certain type of people who, who want to see the world for what it, it really is. So for me it's interesting to, to be able to be a part of that, that group. The people are uh, really um open mind. I noticed a lot of very intelligent people are uh, around the FIGU, also the core group members but also the passive members that don't take no uh, nonsense for truth. I remember the, in the year 2000 when a couple FIGU core group members came to America and just about the first thing they s said to the groups, they spoke English and they said, we just want you to know that while we are core group members and we are students of the spiritual teaching, we don't know that much more than you do. So don't think of us as separate or higher. Or low. And it was a wonderful thing because, you know, Billy has written to be of equal value that we understand that we are essentially as human beings of equal value different capabilities, experience, knowledge, uh, skills, faults, whatever, but essentially of equal value in this evolutionary path. That, as, as Billy said years ago in, in a film we did, the meaning of life is the evolution of consciousness. So you come and you meet fellows and you realize, oh, we are essentially of the same thing, pretty wonderful and pretty amazing, and we can learn from each other and we share in that peace, the love, the freedom and harmony. What I like is we are there are absolutely no difference, differences between female and male. We are all have the same duties, the, the same uh, rights. And the FIGO experience in, in, in physical terms is, is a monthly meeting in our little group in Cologne and um, annually at least uh, being in the center in Switzerland, working, meeting Martin and <laughs> everyone uh, around the globe that comes here. I find from my own interaction with the FIGU community, which in Switzerland only happens once a year directly for a few days, and back where I live in Arizona, we have people come together to try to help co-create a FIGU community that it is um, not unlike other communities in a certain sense, but it's very unlike them in others. What's also a peculiar or a some, it, it's also very important is that there is no resolution or any decision uh, if not all the members give their vote or their yes. Only one vote against, no resolution. This enforces our our feeling of togetherness of uh, because we don't have a party this party is uh, the right and this is the, the left part of the group we just have one group and the whole group goes into one direction all together to build a true community where individuals can function cooperatively we have to discard things that we learned or mislearned along the way and the experience with these groups centered around the spiritual teaching is a, an, it, it, there's an enthusiasm I have for that learning process and I think what it also does is it, it helps people to be comfortable in coming to terms with this step in this current life, with this evolution, where we are not po political, we are not religious, we're not bound with beliefs and systems and rituals and superstitions. We're interacting, it, seeing things as they are in the reality more and more. That helps also to break down the artificial barriers that the societies always impose on people. It's interesting because I guess everyone has their unique uh, personalities and we're all from all over the world. We, don't, we may not speak the same language, but we have a, a, com a common goal, I think. For a, a, a realistic and a positive, worthwhile and valuable goal or objective, then of course it's, it's good to be a part of this kind of, as we say, it's actually, it's, it's a mission a voyage, it's an endeavor. We usually think along most of the time the same 
same line of why we want to help, I guess. So we're here to do the, the, the same thing. When I, I decided to be, become a core group, I knew this will be for the rest of my life. It's just the same like with my wife when I promised her many years ago, decades ago, this is a, a, a promise that I won't break. I've learned so many things from all the core group members and all the passive group members. Visiting the center last year was my first year and I've learned so many things just about uh, how to operate in daily life, how to be a hard worker, how to um, be open and truthful with everybody. The spiritual teaching is a very old, very ancient teaching, over a billion of years old. This spiritual teaching is based on reality. And there are people who say there is no truth and so, but of course there is truth and the truth is always can be traced back to reality. Uh, I'm sitting here, and that's the truth because I exist and I'm here and I'm not over there. Reality, that's the basis of the spiritual teaching. Actually, Billy is the one who wrote down this, this information, this teaching uh, in uh, connection with the extraterrestrials. Of course, everybody wants to be a good person, but uh, if you go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper, uh, you will find uh, there's, uh, there's somewhere there's a border. In the spirit of teaching, you confront yourself with your disabilities. The spirit of teaching has a couple of main um, contents or uh, meanings, namely to be always seek for reality and not for belief, and to always take the responsibility for one's thoughts, the resulting feelings and the actions. You should never blame others for the false feelings that you have because you are, I am the person who is responsible for my feeling, but I am not responsible for the feelings of others. The other part of this spiritual teaching is, as the name says, there is beneath, within our material world, world there is another fine, a fluidal, some kind of energy that is enlivening us as human beings and everything that exists. Life would not be possible without this spiritual, you could say, realm or world. But this is uh, something that cannot be just said in, in uh, two, three sentences. This is something that uh, a person must be open first and study, and then also not to believe. The non, absolutely non-religious content of the spiritual teaching, this is also a, a, a stepping stone for a huge majority of human beings because uh, it's not the opposite of religion. It's so far away that you cannot describe. It has absolutely nothing to do with spiritual teaching, with, with belief or religion or so. This is something that the people should not just believe. Everything that I, I tell here should not just uh, taken for real. So because every human being has the task to think about what uh, is told in the, or taught in the spiritual teaching, not just swallowing because the proof must occur in, to, in one's own consciousness with uh, one's uh, ap the application of reason and understanding. The topics mentioned in the uh, spiritual teachings are too many to enumerate, but some of them certainly are like meditation, personal growth, studying 
uh, developing concentration, a focus, developing self-discipline, finding and eliminating uh, illusions. In studying the teaching and studying uh, you know, what the messages are and how you live in peace and love and freedom and harmony, in most of the world, if you say those words, they, they sound trite or not meaningful any longer because we look for so much stimulation outside of ourselves. But there's nothing wrong with peace. The inner teacher, the inner master, whatever you want to call it, that you know, our consciousness can, can bring forward this nourishment in and from out we then are evolving our thinking and we grow step by step. It's obviously a very long process and we're going to be at it for a long time. Yeah. Nice, but a great, great process, right? What else is there? ある the books explain it very well and very in details what is the problem and how you can solve the problems. So for yourself, your own little problems and the big problems. There's a lot about ourselves, about the way uh, our thinking works, uh, the way how to, you know, also stop thinking, which is uh, the meditational thing to, you know, really go down into oneself and and trying to calm down and potentially learn new things from ourselves and you don't find it in any other books I grew up in a in a religious country in a religious environment um, I was for all intents and purposes um, atheist um, for a good period of time um, because nothing that I was surrounded by made any sense in terms of spirituality, apart from the common sense things that every religion has, you know, don't kill people. <laughs> I had an idea, if there was a, a form of spirituality, I, I had an idea of how, what it should be like. Uh, and when I came across Billy's material, it, um, it was what I had in my head. Um, it's the only thing I've ever read that made sense. It's the only thing I've ever read uh, in terms of spirituality that has any logic to it. So the topics in the spiritual teaching include a wide, wide range of uh, things. So from our earliest history, like ten, tens of thousands of years ago, what happened really in our, in our world, up to the true nature of our universe. So that's kind of like the physics, the science, it, cover, it covers everything, up to the philosophies of uh, human, why, why we're here, what's the purpose of life, and how to be a, a, good, a good human being. And the values that it gives you, you can carry them with you in life. So I know most people are not aware about reincarnation or incarnation, and I think because of that, people think we only live one life, when actually we have much more to come, and we can carry it as well as a luggage in our next life. So it's important to have those values so we can develop them and we can meet them again in our next life. They talk about um, the creation, which is what many people say God. They don't really know exactly what they're talking about when they say the word God. It's a religious term. And there's a lot of um, belief involved in that. So with the spiritual teaching, it's teaching us to learn to know things for yourself instead of believing in anything. As we evolve, our, our spirit evolves through the reincarnation process, and this is how uh, true evolution occurs with human beings. One of the main things that they teach in the spiritual teaching is to not fall into a belief of a religion or a cult. It teaches you to think for yourself, to learn the difference between book knowledge, which is just memorizing something out of a book and repeating it whenever you want to say something that sounds uh, smart or interesting uh, compared to actually doing the research of figuring out for yourself to know for sure for yourself if something's true or not. Whatever you're in interested in, whatever your problems you have, 
Billy has, has uh, written something about it and, and it gives uh, strength to, to go on, both with the spiritual teachings, to read it and uh, go on with your, your own life and to even try to help people when they a ask you for help. Maybe you can help them. You have a better chance to do that. It's a very long process actually. When I came to find out about uh, Billy Meyer, uh, it was really difficult at first because it was a lot of information, so I needed time. But after a while I came to realize that uh, it was quite interesting because it deals with the daily problems that you can encounter in daily life. It helps me with problems with myself, with my um, surroundings. <laughs> so um, it taught me to um, take the responsibility for myself, for my health, for my surroundings and not looking for mistakes um, at the other one. It's a hard work to take responsibility for everything of myself, but I think it's the best way to handle the life. Spiritual teaching helps me to be a good, good person in everyday life and a good example for other people so that in the future we can have a harmonious world for everybody. It basically explains very clearly for, for me at least what the true nature of life is. It helps to see how the world really is so you, we can interact with it properly. A very important lesson is to control my mind, to control my thoughts and uh, I've learned to do this in my way, for me a good way. Um, when, uh, when I have a problem or I met some person or something comes into my mind and um, for example it could be that I would be angry or something like this, then first I say stop. The next is uh, I make a short analysis. Is this really, is this real? Is this truth? Or is this only in your mind that you think about, but it's uh, not uh, uh, the reality? The most powerful tool you have is uh, how you handle your daily life with your partners, your family and so on. I start out my day trying to focus on certain aspects that help me get the right frame of mind each day. For me it was always, uh, also as a child, was very hard often to decide oh, should I choose this or that and this is one topic which or where the spiritual teaching helped me so I can make decisions faster and I know now that's correct or that was the right way. I'll try to study and you know do, do the meditation every day. It's, it has a very profound impact and I find myself being more grounded, being able to see things a little bit more in an overview fashion, not getting upset about certain things. On the other hand, we are one being on this planet that can affect something for good. I feel it's important to realize we have that responsibility and, um, and have the power to, to do so if we decide we want to exercise it. The main things for me is taking up the idea of being conscious of and controlling my thinking, realizing that cause and effect starts with the thought, it goes to the feeling, then very often another little thought, and then the action or the inaction. We are here to live our life, so we need to be well balanced to do so, and, and the Geisteslehre helps me a lot to do that. I suppose our lives are so busy that we, you know, when I'm reading it, it gives me a chance to reflect, to think about the concept for a start um, and see how that applies. I've learned about duty, I've learned about self-responsibility. You can open these books anywhere, take a paragraph out and um, think about it and make sense. And that's what I love about it, you know. Everything that happens in my life is my own responsibility. That's a great lesson for me to learn. It helped me uh, to take the steps in my own life to grow and to learn and to strive to uh, evolve. When you come from the, from the world of uh, education of your parents, your self-recognition, your uh, knowledge that you have acquired in your private or business or school life, then you form a certain view of the world. And when you hit Figu, then you find out that many of these views don't really tie up. And you piece by piece you adjust this view. 
And then everything makes sense to become really strong with this. It's completely different than reading a book and saying, okay, this is true because the book says it's true. Well, it actually takes a lot of hard work of researching and uh, studying to actually find out for yourself if it is true or not. Whatever I start, uh, I do, can do more relaxed because I have a very deep confidence with myself, with uh, the way I'm acting, the way I am, and also with my environment because I understand much better why they do what. I can recognize it. And therefore, I think uh, if everybody studies this, eventually people would meet at this common um, sense-making point and everything would become a lot better. Peace would be normal to everybody. No, no reason for aggression anymore, because you understand. And sometimes uh, when I read something from the spiritual teachings, I don't get it. But then I, I move through life and then once it, it hits me. Sometimes I read it again and then it hits me. I think, oh wow, this is what they mean. Uh, and, and then you see the truth and then you see yourself really developing. So in the spiritual teaching, through the thinking, through the self-responsibility, understanding the law of cause and effect, seeing things as they are, we begin on the small individual level to correct the thinking and then we are in a collective interlinked around the world of a small number of people who are correcting the thinking, recognizing the nature of things and trying to work towards the improvement even though certain events will unstoppably occur, there will be survivors, it will carry on, and in the far distant times that Billy speaks about, human beings will have survived, emerged consciously, never again to set up this kind of crazy world, and the spiritual teaching will be worldwide and universally available. Main problem beneath all the catastrophes that are happening and all the turmoil that's going on is overpopulation and religiosity. These two factors actually are the, the most dangerous uh, factors in our world. Everybody actually sees the problems in the world. The normal problems every person sees and knows and it's in the paper, it's in the media. I see the problems uh, in the relationship of the people. War seems like the biggest problem. The more people competing for resources of any sort in a finite world, the more uh, stress on the human beings and their consciousness and their relationships to each other and to the nature. Problems of uh, raising children. Materialism, so people are caring mostly for the money producing manufacturing goods with no regard for uh, for the environment all the energy problems problems with food food distribution climate change is all over the news these days and um, i do know like many others that uh, this is caused by us people on this planet which are far too many uh, for this world to handle us so the overpopulation is root cause of what we see today. The biggest problem I see is the overpopulation and all the problems who's, who come with it. Food and place to live and quality of living, I think that's the biggest problem. I think that there are many manifestations of a core problem and so the problems we see are a lot of aggression and violence between people, are more of the selfishness, the greed, the pursuit of acquiring, getting by any means. Uh, underlying it from now, which makes a lot more sense to me than when I first heard about it, is the overpopulation. I've been traveling quite a lot and uh, I have to say that uh, being in different places, especially in Asia, make me feel like uh, whatever that was being said by Figu is coming to a right point and overpopulation is definitely becoming a big problem. When you dig deeper into this statement, then I think it's quite easy to find that this is the source and the cause of um, virtually all the big problems that you find in the media. As simple as that. We should uh, face it and do something against it. Equally as uh, big of a problem is the religions, which have uh, mis like misguided the uh, most of the population of the, the world. This spiritual teaching is 
extremely important because only if people realize that there is a truth behind everything and if they are lining up their path of life and base their life on reality, they can ultimately reach peace, harmony and, uh, and also love. I feel that the importance of this material for problem solving rests to a great degree on the fact that there is nothing to believe. It is an instruction, a teaching, just as if you want to learn how to operate or fix a computer or a car or to learn physics or anything else. Here's the instruction. This is the teaching. Now you, I, we must take that if we choose and we apply it and we test it to see how does this work in reality? Now, I think it's important because if we consider our world today, we can see there is a there is problem in terms of violence, war. It doesn't seem to, to end or to stop. And whenever you come in contact with the Billy Meyer information, you can see that there is a solution. For the past thousands of years, the religions have really taught us the, the incorrect way, and which has led to um, materialism, to all the, the overpopulation and all the problems in the world. If you go try to explain it to all the other human beings, what, what is the real problem of the world. And they try not to convince them, but to show them what the problem is. Overpopulation is one issue that I've learned from Figu. I didn't even know it was an issue in the world until I read it in the information from Figu. At the beginning, probably, you don't understand that maybe the population topic is, is the importance topic. If you have a deeper look into the population matters uh, that it brings a lot of problems within then you will see more and more that is really the course where all the problems slowly uh, increase it takes so much resources that it's impossible for 8 billion people to live a quality life with the resources and especially as we move forward into the future the population is going to grow and the resources on earth are diminishing and of course, with our technology, we're learning how to provide more resources for people, but it will never, it'll never cover the bases to make sure everybody's living a healthy life. It's impossible to fix any of the problems on Earth, really, until we bring the population to a sustainable number. We can only do these things with a kind of birth control, but it has to be in all states of the world, so a worldwide control. There's so many religions around the world and everybody is born into these religions. Their parents are religious, so they naturally are religious too. And to break free from that religion is hard sometimes for many people. Unlike the partisanship of a political uh, union of people who are have an agenda and are subject to that kind of thing, or to a religious belief system, which always they are setting themselves above and apart other There is none of this type of thing, so we are free to see a thing as it is. And we can support something if it comes good and in harmony with truth and the teaching, no matter who is bringing it forward. And that way, I think evolution is vastly improved for human beings that participate in that kind of thinking and not in the partisanships of religion and politics. What once was known in the past and got lost, he's bringing that back to us so we can know it again and, and act according to knowledge. Based on your life experience, you create your worldview. Some people just talk about the cars or <laughs> football or whatever, and that's their interest too. They don't care about spiritual things. If you're not uh, question yourself these questions, um, you might not be so um, open to this uh, whole context. There are many reasons why people could be skeptic about Figo. Um, it depends on what your aims are in your life, your goals, of course. And if you have, for example, f uh, a lot of free time to use it, where uh, a lot of people don't have this time 
they are, have a lot of problems in the families or somewhere. So you, of course, you have to be a little bit balanced and, um, and focus on yourself and to be able to do something. When you consider that the majority of the world population is very much influenced and limited by religion, and actually programmed uh, not to accept anything else, then it becomes pretty clear that, of course, the majority has to be very, very skeptical and even may never come to the point to even collect enough interest or be free enough to even deal with this. Many people first come across the material via the Billy's UFO photos or they find some skeptical attack online or they see the, the, the laser gun or the wedding cake ship or whatever and naturally this there's an intention to provoke the controversy in terms of the physical evidence that I saw as I call it the eye candy the thing to get your attention the field of UFOlogy is filled with all kind of crazy claims and, and, and delusion. And so it's hard to find the, the, the jewel, the one piece within this vast uh, crazy dump of belief and commercializing and everything. The greater thinkers in the past who, you know, turned science and and change things in consciousness begin, you know, beginning with the prophets of old, of course, but moving on, try to get us to, to embrace the principles of the spiritual teaching because through self-responsibility, seeing things as they are, understanding cause and effect, we see the order of life and we can begin to consider, well, we are probably not alone in life. And more and more people, you know, will become then aware of that. When you um, first encounter this, you, you are confronted with a wall of skepticism and purposeful skepticism, almost like a, like a wall, a block uh, to stop people from getting to it. It takes a long time to filter through that. It took me two years of research before I uh, understood that there was truth to it. It's also correct for them to be skeptical at, at first because people need to be uh, critical of everything they see. They can't just believe violently. And then people who are, are curious and free enough in their thinking to accept or reject based on their own thinking, they can pursue that part. Then to me what I found starting in the late 80s is what I call the higher standard of proof. And that's the prophetically accurate information, especially that which is of a scientific nature or dealing with geopolitical or environmental information that in this case goes back to at least 1945 and Billy himself becomes active in disseminating and publishing in 1951. He's only uh, at that point something like uh, you know 14 years old and you look back over 70 or more years almost 80 years and you see that this type of thing is the next step where you get less concerned about the phenomenon and you can find that the phenomenon has been analyzed and authenticated, but still people may argue with that. I think leaving that aside, if, if you concentrate on, on Geist's Lehrer only, you would always find um, the logic and understand it once you invest the time to actually do it. I mean, I've tried it with many people, uh, just throwing some, some writings in front of them and they'd say, oh, wow, I haven't uh, understood it so easily before. Uh, I had to go through every aspect of the skeptical arguments and see if they were true or not. They, they were not. So um, after two years I eventually went to visit the center and, um, and saw it for myself and then I understood what was going on. But it takes a long time, it takes a lot of work and um, people don't have time, people don't have the inclination, um, uh, or very few people do and those very few people usually end up here. <laughs> it's a lot of work, I must say. It's very challenging, it's hard work, because you deal with yourself, and uh, I don't know if, if you know, but to, um, to recognize truly what you are and who you are and which problems you have, that takes a lot of courage to face that. Yeah. So, but it's worth it.
you have to find it out. <laughs>